This is Mac OS X. Brave browser boasts of boosts. The latest MacBook Air is faster in a couple of ways. And a tough as nails father of electricity. It is Thursday, the 14th of March, 2024. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS X. Brought to you by yours truly and supported by people like you. Patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash macOSCAN. The Brave browser for iOS has a lot to be excited about, but crowing about it may not be the best idea. Quoting a piece from iMore, Mobile browser developer Brave is already seeing the benefits of new tools that give iOS users a choice of default browser in the EU after recording an uptick in downloads in the wake of those changes. The number of new users appears to be no joke. Assuming their stats are on the up and up, downloads have gone up and up. Brave posted a chart online that showed downloads from the middle of January through the beginning of March tracking between 7,000 and 8,000 per day. Things changed once Apple's DMA compliance kicked in in the EU. Brave's chart shows downloads rise to just under 9,000 on the 6th of March, the day after iOS 17.4's release with its DMA-centered tweaks. Just over 9,500 on the 7th of March, just over 10,000 on the 8th, just under 10,500 on the 9th, just under 11,000 on the 10th, and right at 11,000 downloads on the 11th of March. In a subsequent post, Brave said Monopoly defenders argue that the Monopoly simply offer better products, but as we can see, when consumers get a clear choice of iOS browsers, they are choosing alternatives to Safari. As a browser, says iMore, Brave purports to be a faster, private browser with fewer ads. It also comes with a built-in AI assistant, firewall, and a VPN. That sounds like plenty of reasons people might choose it. But, well, here, according to iMore, is how the choosing takes place. Upon downloading the update, every iOS user in the EU is presented with a new screen that requires them to choose a default browser. It's one of several changes the EU is forcing upon gatekeepers in the block, which it believes will open up users to more options when it comes to using mobile browsers, search engines, operating systems, and app marketplaces. Now here to me is the part that makes me question the crowing. A piece on Brave's assertion from Mac Rumors shows what seems to be a screenshot of the browser choices presented in the EU. Assuming it is what it seems to be, and assuming everybody's getting the same screen, Brave is the first choice on the list. I'm not saying people don't know what they're doing and aren't making considered and informed decisions. I will say it would be interesting to know what percentage of Brave's new users are just hitting the first choice because they're trying to get on the web. It would also be neat to see numbers from other browsers available on that list. iMore sort of seems to call this into question as well, saying, at least some users seem to be opting to try new default browsers despite the relatively limited information available when making the pick. All users see is the name, developer title, and app icon of any given browser. Put another flag on the iPhone making map. 9to5Mac says it looks like Foxconn is building the entry-level iPhone 15 in Brazil. No big announcement for this. In fact, the info is pretty hard to find. According to the report, when checking the URL of the checkout webpage for the iPhone 15, customers will now notice the part number ending with BR slash A which is used to identify Apple products assembled in Brazil. Most products are identified with a BE slash A or BZ slash A to indicate that they've been imported to be sold in the country. 9to5Mac points out that this is only true for the 6.1-inch iPhone 15. The Plus, Pro, and Pro Max versions are all still import-only. 
While the complexity of the pro phones may be one reason to keep manufacturing where it is, 9 to 5 Mac figures economics are also at play. The way the site sees it, the entry-level iPhone 15 is probably the most popular model in Brazil, given its relative affordability. Apple's M3 MacBook Air should be faster than its predecessors, and that's not just down to the M3. Mac Rumors writes up an internal change for the laptop's flash storage. In a video teardown shared by iFixit, the 256 gigabytes of storage in the machine on which they were working came in two 128-gigabyte chunks. That by itself apparently makes the read-write speeds faster than the machine's antecedent. The M2 MacBook Air relied on a single 256GB storage chip, according to the report. Mac Rumor cites a test of the two machines, showing a 33% faster write speed for the more recent configuration, and an 82% faster read speed. That is something to consider if you're considering Apple's 256GB 13-inch M2 MacBook Air, That machine is still up for sale for $999, technically giving Apple's laptop line a starting price under $1,000. That said, MacRumor says the slower SSD speeds are unlikely to be noticed by the average user working on common day-to-day tasks. If you've had a problem with your USB hub since updating to macOS Sonoma 14.4, you are not alone. Mac Rumors cites growing reports from people who say theirs have gone on the fritz since the latest OS update. Some are said to be experiencing connectivity issues with USB hubs and monitors with USB ports. Kind of an issue since that's how a lot of mice, keyboards, and other peripherals make contact with the Mac. The site cites complaints on its own forums, as well as on Reddit and among the Apple support community, If you're looking for a remedy between now and whatever fix Apple offers whenever it offers it, MacRumor says a handful of users have had some success by changing the setting Allow Accessories to Connect to Ask for New Accessories under the Security section of System Settings, which you can find in Privacy and Security. Interesting details this week on the Pulse Oximeter ban and Apple Watch unit sold today. I think we knew this, but now we actually know. They've still got the pulse oximeter hardware. That hardware just won't work. Apple Insider has word of the deets found in a quiet update to the U.S. Customs and Border Protection website. According to the report, since Apple disabled the blood pulse oximeter via software, it can be reactivated via an update at a later date. The customs order details how Massimo argued Apple's solution wasn't good enough because they managed to reactivate the feature via a jailbroken iPhone. Customs figured that was more trouble than most people would go through, so Apple's software fix was fine with them. That's good news for current buyers. If slash when Apple wins the right to turn the feature back on, they should be able to do so with a simple software update. Otherwise, you might be on your next Apple Watch before you get the feature. The piece says the patent over which Apple and Massimo are fighting doesn't expire until August of 2028. News of a new comedy on the Apple TV Plus horizon. Eh, Pretty far on the horizon. No name for this one yet, but the creatives are there. It's got a star and it's got a plot. According to Apple's press release, the 10-episode comedy follows the character Price Cahill, an over-the-hill ex-pro golfer whose career was derailed prematurely 20 years ago. After he gets fired from his job at an Indiana sporting goods store and his wife walks out on him, Price hedges his bets entirely on a troubled 17-year-old golf phenom. It's like Loki meets Happy Gilmore. Or... Wedding Crashers meets Happy Gilmore. I'm thinking Happy Gilmore because of the troubled golf phenom thing. The other two I'm thinking because Owen Wilson. 
He's an executive producer on the series. He is also playing the part of Cahill. Set the director, Jonathan Dayton and Valerie Ferris. They were the team behind Fleshman is in Trouble, Little Miss Sunshine, and Battle of the Sexes. No word on anything like a release date for this series. And finally today, if you're a fan of American history, you might still want to watch the trailer for an Apple TV Plus miniseries. The Cupertino streamer issued a press release Wednesday teasing the eight-part historical drama Franklin about the work of famed sitcom actress Bonnie Franklin. I'm kidding. It's about Ben Franklin. You know, the guy who invented the kite or the key or something based on the book A Great Improvisation, Franklin, France, and the Birth of America. The release says the series explores the thrilling story of the greatest gamble of Benjamin Franklin's career. In December 1776, Franklin is world famous for his electrical experiments, but his passion and power are put to the test when, as the fate of American independence hangs in the balance, he embarks on a secret mission to France. That was the mission to get an absolute monarchy to underwrite America's experiment in democracy. You kind of forget how crazy that was. If it sounded like I was knocking this trailer, I'm not. Michael Douglas stars as Benjamin Franklin. Romancing the Stone. Fatal Attraction. That Michael Douglas. Sounding more like Kirk Douglas with every passing day. We tend to think of Franklin as less gravelly, more roly-poly. Then again, we think George Washington never told a lie. History is funny. The first three of the series' eight episodes hit Apple TV Plus on Friday, the 12th of April. You can catch the trailer now on YouTube. Mac OS Ken, brought to you by me and supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash macOSCan. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media, online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways. Info at macOSCan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time, that is news from macOS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. Ciao.